This presentation is about ginseng, why people want to dig it, the habitat in which it thrives, and how to grow it. Ginseng is a plant surrounded by mystery, desire, greed, and law-breaking. It is a slow-growing, long-lived perennial herb that grows in the eastern United States. There are ginseng species that also grow in China, Korea, Vietnam, and eastern Siberia. Ginseng has narrowly defined habitat requirements and is notoriously hard to spot. Most wild American ginseng is sold to exporters who sell it to buyers in China, and most cultivated American ginseng finds its way into supplement and energy drink ingredients. Ginseng habitat is very fragile and depends on trees to provide shade, cooler temperatures, and ground moisture. Logging activities have taken a huge toll on habitat opportunities for ginseng. Asia desires American ginseng, and diggers throughout the Ozarks and Appalachia continue to dig the wild roots. Traditional diggers, those whose fathers learned from their fathers and passed it on to their sons, do this in a responsible way so there are plants for the next generation. Ginseng is all about yin and yang. Chinese ginseng is considered yang, and American ginseng is considered yin. According to the Chinese traditional way of classifying a plant, if it grows in a cold climate, as in China, it will be a yang plant that possesses the characteristics of warming, light, action, and energy. A hot climate produces plants that are attributed with opposite yin characteristics, cooling, calming, and cleansing of excessive yang. All ginsengs contain a compound called ginsenicide. It is this compound that gives many of the medicinal properties of the plant, though there are other compounds that work synergistically together within the plant as well. Ginseng root is valued because it enhances the libido, increases stamina, improves circulation, enhances resistance to illness, revitalizes after illnesses, and increases the blood supply. Ginsenicides are present in ginseng leaves as well, so it's not absolutely necessary to use the root, which will kill the plant. There's promising research on the berry as an aid for diabetes, too. The ginseng grown in the woods for use of roots, leaves, and berries is grown in a way called virtually wild, or wild simulated. This means that the seeds are planted and then nature does the rest. The plants sold at Wild Ozark are grown in seed beds and then transplanted to pots. When these plants are placed in the woods, they will be wild simulated, as long as no fertilizer is used and no cultivation is done to remove competing weeds. The Ozarks have a genetically unique ginseng, as do the Appalachians and Wisconsin, and every other region where ginseng grows. When one strain of ginseng is planted near another strain, they will cross-pollinate. The result is still ginseng, and one strain is visually very much like other strains. Wild Ozark does not plant seeds from habitats where wild ginseng already grows in order to protect genetic pollution of the wild strains. It's illegal to gather berries from wild ginseng when digging, unless the berries are replanted near the mother plant. It's also illegal to sell wild ginseng seeds. The only seeds that can be bought to reestablish or replenish a habitat are from outside sources. Ginseng requires deep shade, moist soil, and cool air. Cool air is a relative term. When you're walking in the forest, you can feel the difference when you enter a space that's right for ginseng. The air is noticeably cooler because the shade is deeper and the ground is moist. Wild Ozark Ginseng Nursery is to cross this creek. The hill slopes upwards just past the trees there and is a good environment for ginseng. The air is cooler than some of the areas nearby. This is an area where wild ginseng grows with abandon. The path is filled with nettles, trilliums, trout lilies, green dragons, and jack-in-the-pulpit plants. This is a north-northeast facing hill. The area was also logged in the past, and there is still a lot of undergrowth, but the ginseng is thriving along with all of the companion plants that normally occupy the same habitat. Ginseng is not an easy plant to identify. Many plants in the forest look similar to it. Also, ginseng looks a lot different in the first year as a seedling 
than it does as a mature plant. Companion plants include certain trees, shrubs, and smaller plants that prefer the same places as ginseng. When you find a location that has a lot of these companions, it's usually a good spot for ginseng. Finding these plants is often easier than just striking out to look for ginseng. Look for tall trees for a high overhead canopy that filters most of the sunlight. 80% shade is ideal. This is deep shade. These are the companion trees that shade ginseng habitat. Companion shrubs found in the ginseng habitat include Just like the trees and shrubs, some smaller companion plants can grow in more sunlight and drier conditions too. So they're not a foolproof indication of great habitat, but when many are present, it's a good clue to pay close attention. A few are very strong indicators. These include the maidenhair fern, doll's eyes, and blue cohosh. Anytime these three plants are seen together, it's likely an excellent habitat for ginseng. Ginseng is relatively easy to grow when you have the right environment, proper shade, and ground moisture. Order your seeds from as local a source as possible. Wild Ozark uses Ozark Mountain Ginseng in Missouri. When you're in a good spot, you'll notice the soil is soft. Rake back the leaves and take a look. You should be able to press your thumb right down into it. To plant, you can either make seed beds and transplant seedlings later, or seed each one in place. If you're seeding each one in place, you don't have to rake back the leaves. Just put a seed about an inch into the ground. This can be done by crawling around with a bag full of seeds. Ticks are no extra charge. To make seed beds, just rake back the leaves, scatter the seeds, walk back and forth over the seed bed to give the seeds good soil contact, then put the leaves back. Ginseng is legal to harvest when it is five years old and only between September 1 and December 1. If you intend to sell these roots, it's best to wait until the plants are at least 10 years and preferably 20 years old. It takes about 300 plants to make a dry pound. The best practice for sustainability is to have at least 100 plants per patch and then only harvest one quarter to one half of the mature plants. Plant every berry of the plants you dig. <music> 